I've had a lot of messages from parents in the last few days asking for help about homeschooling. Uh, when lockdown began, a lot of kids were away on holiday from school or at least took a week or two's holiday, uh, just hoping that they'd get through lockdown without too much disruption. We're now realizing, of course, that lockdown has to be extended. And even after lockdown, we're not going to be rushing back to schools. We're going to have to continue to physical distance ourselves from other people for probably 12 to 18 months until we get a vaccine for COVID-19. And so school is going to be disrupted for at least the whole of 2020, probably most of 2021 as well. And so we have to do homeschooling. And it's chaos. Uh, it's driving people nuts for a number of reasons. First of all, a lot of teachers are just not yet adjusting themselves to this new reality. So they're taking the curriculum, they're just emailing it to parents at home. Now, I'm not uh, criticizing p uh, teachers for doing this. In fact, this should help you to understand why teachers are such brilliant professionals. Because parents, that pile of stuff they've just sent you home, that is the curriculum, right? And what your teachers do every single day is to take that pile of documents and turn it into something that's interesting, engaging, exciting, that thrills your kids. I know not every teacher does this, but the good teachers do. That's why we pay them the big bucks, right? <laughs> Sorry, teachers, that was probably not a really well-positioned joke at this point. We should pay our teachers a lot more, is what I should be saying at this point, because they are brilliant at making that very boring stuff accessible. So parents, uh, before you complain at the teacher sending you the curriculum, uh, first at least congratulate them on doing a good job with that curriculum. But we do actually have a problem because teachers are not good at helping other people to teach. Uh, yeah, teachers are good at teaching, they're not good at teaching other people to teach, and that should be fairly obvious. I mean, you know, salespeople might be brilliant salespeople and then very bad sales managers. This happens everywhere in the world. And so here's a few things that we need to do. As parents, if you're in this situation, the first thing is, please, 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 stop panicking. It honestly doesn't matter if your children fall a little bit behind on the curriculum. I, I promise you from personal experience it doesn't matter. 12 years ago my family moved to London. Uh, I was building my business internationally and I needed to be based in London uh, for travel purposes. And so we took a great adventure as a family and we moved across to the UK. My oldest two daughters were in school at the time. Uh, my, my middle daughter was just going into her first year of school. And when we got to the UK, we discovered that the UK curriculum is different to the South African curriculum. Um, for example, my, my middle daughter uh, couldn't read yet and everybody else in her class could. Um, it wasn't because she was stupid or anything like that, she just hadn't been taught uh, to, to read and, and to write. I think my oldest daughter had, had um, issues with cursive, for, for example. I forget exactly what issues they had, but I remember the, the reading and the writing uh, for my middle daughter. And the teachers were amazing at the new school, helping my wife and I, mainly my wife, uh, to spend lots of extra time helping my, uh, my middle daughter to catch up on the work. Four and a half years later, we decided to move back to South Africa. My business had been established and we as a family felt that the uh, lifestyle that we have in South Africa, we're an outdoors family, we, we, we like outdoor activity, uh, that that would be a preferable lifestyle uh, for us. Yeah, the London weather was doing our heads in as well. Um, and we wanted a little bit more sunshine. So we moved back just in time for my oldest daughter to go into high school. And we came back at just the time when uh, children in South Africa have to choose what languages they, they um, select. Uh, you have to do two, at least two languages in South Africa. My oldest daughter was classified as a, as a foreigner coming back or, or an immigrant. So she didn't have to do any other African languages. In, sh in fact, she did French as an, as an additional first language to, uh, for high school. And my, my middle daughter bravely decided to do Zulu and eventually was able to do it as an additional first language 
um, all the way uh, through to her metric. Uh, both of them got uh, distinctions uh, for those subjects, but they were missing some South African history. They were missing a bit of some South African geography. They were missing some languages. In the UK, we discovered that they were missing some vocabulary. They were missing um, uh, some basic concepts in the UK system. So all the way through, my daughters have twice been disrupted and then missed chunks of their schooling. Even to this day, every now and again, one of my daughters says, what's that word? I've never heard that word. And I think, you must know that word. That's like a grade one, grade two word. And then I remind myself, mm, there's little chunks missing. But you know, both, both of my daughters got uh, a whole fistful of distinctions in their final school examinations. Both of them got into their first choice university uh, courses. My oldest daughter got on the dean's list at university. Um, both of them are, are nailing it uh, in, the, in their studies. Both of them are, got scholarships. Uh, you know, both of them are well-rounded individuals with chunks of their education missing because in two different years, we disrupted them quite significantly, moving them between countries and education systems. The children, of the, the children in school now in 2020 and 2021 are going to be disrupted. They are going to have chunks of their education missing and they will survive. Um, they will do well. They will do whatever they were going to do. They are still going to do. They can catch up on it. Uh, doctors, for example, in the UK, who were in their final year in 2020, they were going into final exams now in, in April and May. They've been told, no, sorry, there are no final exams. The final few weeks of your course, you don't have to do. Well done, you've already qualified as doctors. In fact, we need you in the hospitals. Here are your placements, bang, you're done. And people might be horrified to say, but, but what was going on in the last few weeks of those uh, doctors' education? Well. Hopefully not something that you've got a problem with right now because they didn't learn that stuff. When will they learn it? They'll learn it when they need it. They'll come back and do you know, their, their professional development stuff. Their CPD points will catch up later. These are professionals. They're passionate about what they do for a living. They know they've missed certain things in the curriculum. They'll catch that up. They'll work that out. But right now, that's not the most important thing. So parents, right now, it is not the most important thing for you to finish the 2020 curriculum with your poor children. It is not the most important thing for you to go through all of the stuff that the teacher emailed to you, whether you like it or not, and whether your child likes it or not. That is not the most important thing. Right now, the most important thing is your physical and mental and psychological help. The most important thing is your child's physical, mental and psychological health. If your child is not enjoying the learning, you have got a problem. The third important thing is your child enjoying learning. If you can do anything that will set your child up for success in the next 50 years of their life, it is not going to be the part of the curriculum that you're struggling with this morning. It is going to be that your child loves learning, that your child loves self-development. So if you are not loving homeschooling and your child is not loving homeschooling, stop. Please stop what you are doing and trying to do right now. Trying to create a bad facsimile, a bad copy of what school was supposed to be is not going to help anybody. Breathe. Take a gap. Just please take a, take a break. Give your kid another week of holiday. Honestly, honestly, give yourself a gap. Spend the next few days then working with your child to work out what your child actually wants to learn. Honestly, it's as simple as that. What do they want to learn? If your child wants to learn astronomy, if your child wants to learn ancient Greek, if your child wants to learn finger painting, if your child wants to learn artistic dance, go online to Google, type in, learn whatever the thing is your child says they want to learn. You can, if you want to go a little bit higher grade on this, type in MOOC, M-O-O-C. That's short for Massive Open Online Course. Um, 
and type in MOOC and the subject your child wants to learn. Find an online course. It's probably free, but if you have to pay for it, maybe pay for it. Download that course and then help your child to love doing it. Okay, that's week one of homeschooling done. Yet who cares what the subject is, right? Your child has to gain confidence in learning from home. You and your child have to gain confidence from learning online and learning from on online resources. And you all just have to calm down just a little bit and get healthy again. Get excited about learning. Right, now week two is get a step closer to the actual curriculum your child's supposed to be learning. So you can maybe nudge your child in the direction of their subjects. Let's say it's mathematics. Don't go straight back to the curriculum again. Why don't you go to Khan Academy, K-H-A-N Academy online. Khan Academy, look at the maths section your child is learning. Find the Khan Academy's online tutorials. I promise you, the Khan Academy online tutorials are better than 99% of the teachers at your kids' schools. I, I'm not trying to be rude to your, to your, chi to your child's uh, teacher. Your child's teacher was never trained to do online teaching. The fact that your child's teacher can take that boring curriculum they emailed to you and turn it into something that's engaging and exciting is pure genius. But your child's teacher at school is genius in the classroom. They're not genius at, at developing digital uh, uh, curriculum and digital products unless they've been doing it for a while. So one or two percent of teachers at the moment are shining because they've actually understood that the future of education is about distance learning and online education. And they're brilliant at producing digital products. They've probably even been doing it for a few uh, years with your children um, and gaining knowledge. But 99% of teachers are struggling like you are at the moment. So they've kind of got to prove they're working. They're trying to justify school fees, let's be honest. So they, they, they're sending you stuff just to show that they're actually doing some work. If it's not good stuff, throw it out. Don't rant at your teacher. Sympathize with the teacher. Maybe if you find a better version of the, of the class, send the link to the teacher and suggest the teacher sends that out instead. Honestly, if you are a teacher watching this, please do that. You know other teachers in your subject area, in your network of schools. You've been to all the teachers' conferences. There's probably somebody better than you at producing these resources who's probably enjoying producing the resources. Please contact them and just get their resources. If you are one of those teachers who's good at producing digital resources, please share it with other teachers. Make it open source at the moment. This is not a time for competition between schools, right? This is a time of crisis where we should all be in this together. So let's find the best version of the lesson that needs to be taught. And let's give that to our kids. Don't be stuck, parents, with whatever your school sent you. Do it. Your homework is not to convert 30 pages of an email curriculum into something interesting. Your process as a parent is to try and find the best version of that. And by the way, if your kids are older than 13, they can probably do a better job at finding a better version than you can. So that's the next school lesson. The next school lesson is find a better lesson, right? So week two is find better lessons. Week three then is do the better lessons. And yes, you know what? Your kids are not going to get through the whole curriculum this year. Get over it. There's not one single chance your child is getting through the whole curriculum this year. Now, for the parents who do have rocket scientists for, for children, if your kid is going to get through the whole curriculum this year, well, your kid will get through the whole curriculum by August, okay? by July. Because if they're that brilliant, and some kids are, some kids are, are, are much better at learning on their own and learning at a distance. They shouldn't have been going to school in the first place. Well, then set them free. Don't let them be held back by the curriculum. They might do two years worth of work this year. The point I'm trying to make is there's not a single child on this planet that's going to get through the curriculum as planned this year. Can we just get over trying to make that happen? And can we just start looking at the child that's in your house and doing three things for them? Ensure their health. 
This is mental, physical and psychological health. Some children can be pushed more and will be healthier if they are pushed a little bit more. You should know this as a parent. Some children need to just back off completely for now. You should know this as a parent. If you don't, you're a bad parent, but you can fix it now. You're locked down 24 hours in the same space. Your homework, if you're a bad parent, is get to know your child. And you're not gonna get your child by forcing them to do schoolwork they hate, are you? So in every single way, I'm saying step away from the schoolwork and step into your child's life. Second thing that you need to do is make sure your child loves learning. If your child is not loving the curriculum as set, throw the curriculum away. The greatest gift your child will have when they leave lockdown is that they want to go back to school. Not because they want to escape you in the house, but because they love learning. And they realize how much they're missing. And they want to go back to school because they're in love with learning. How can you show your children a love of learning? You can be in love with learning. What are you learning during this lockdown? How are you engaging with the things your children wants to learn, want to learn? Your children might love you. Sad if they don't. I hope that they do. If they love you, then they will love spending time with you. Not time with you trying to get them through the curriculum, just time with you. So maybe if you learn what has been sent and just let your kids sit alongside you as you learn it, maybe that's one way to do it. I don't know. I don't know what it's going to take for you to demonstrate a love of learning and for you to help your children love learning. But whatever it takes, please do that. And then thirdly, the curriculum. There are things that your children need to learn. There's stuff in that curriculum that is important. But you know what I can tell you from personal experience? That if your children don't get through all of that, they will be fine. They will be okay. They will be able to catch up. That's not the only thing. If you get these things right in that order, you'll have done a great job no matter what happens. If your kids are healthy and happy, if your kids love learning, and learn what they can and what they want to, even if it's not on the curriculum, then ultimately they will catch up. Or even if they never do, they'll still be great human beings and make a great contribution in the world. Even if they've got a few words missing and a few concepts missing, that's not the end of the world. This COVID-19 is disrupting the world completely. The children of 2020, 2021 will always have 2020 and 2021 on their CVs. No one's going to begrudge them a blip in their academic record. We will always judge people by the character they have because of what they learned and experienced through 2020, 2021 and beyond. We will never begrudge them for a blip or a uh, a slight loss of learning. But we will know that they came out of this better people. We came out of it better people, stronger families, more emotionally intact people. That should be your focus, parents. Please calm down about homeschooling. Do what you can. Do as much as you can. If you can't do more, you can't. Love, be gracious, be patient, be kind, and let's get through this together. My name is Graham Codrington. If this has been useful, I know it's been long, but if it's been useful, please share it. Uh, you can have a look at more videos like this, that uh, most of them shorter, uh, that will help you. But you go and have a look at youtube.com slash Graham Codrington. And all the videos are there for you to share with your friends and your family. Turn this into something you speak about with your family and friends. And I hope it makes a difference to you and yours. Grace and peace to you and strength as we get through this together.